Hello and welcome to another Collect the Thoughts, the show where I collect my thoughts on video games and today we'll be talking about Halo Infinite. Um, before we get into it, of course, I have to mention that my voice sounds like this because I lost my voice during the weekend. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, I'm not really a person that screams much, so who knows, I think it's the cold, probably. Doesn't matter. So just be aware that my voice is kind of weird sounding today, but that's fine because I really had to do this review, or at least I feel like I do. I'll be honest, I think I'm gonna be going a bit against the grain here with Halo Infinite as it has been very highly praised by everyone. And while I did enjoy it and I will give it a positive review if that's what you're wondering, I definitely also have my fair share of problems with it as a game. Not even so much as as a Halo fan, which I'm very much a casual Halo fan. I've played a lot of the first game, but everything else I only played very recently with the Master Chief Collection. And also, I just haven't played 5. I don't own any Xboxes, so I can't really try that one out and compare it to this one. So if I end up comparing it a lot to Halo 4 or even some of the other ones, well, that's why. But let's get into it with the story and it's a very cheesy, kind of cliche, AAA game story. And this might sound mean or condescending, but it's really not. I mean, most people enjoy this type of story where, you know, it's fairly easy to follow. The stakes are very superficial, so they don't really affect the gameplay all that much. And, um, you know the characters. Probably the weakest thing here, most characters in this game feel woefully underdeveloped. Like for example, the main villain, I have no idea what his intentions were. To the point where I didn't think they were the main villain, I thought the person under them was the main villain. So it was kind of weird that when I beat that person who I thought was the main villain, the game still went on for about two hours. It kind of felt oddly thrown in. This character had showed up before, but never said anything special or that would make me think that they were the actual villain behind it all. I just thought it was really poorly done. Speaking of other characters, then we also have the pilot. He's the guy that showed up in the trailers and is okay. He's like a Spanish guy. He kind of falls into that Far Cry. Far Cry is gonna be brought up a lot here, by the way. But he falls into that kind of buddy in Far Cry thing where he mostly exists as comic relief and also being very helpful gameplay wise despite him being somewhat cowardly early on which of course exists as a very you know obvious payoff later on as him having to be brave and that kind of thing. Which mind you is not a bad thing but uh, you know it just it's very transparent here. And then the elephant in the room is of course Cortana. Cortana is back as a new character. It's not really Cortana, it's like a copy of her and she's a completely different character that has no discerning characteristics as Cortana but she's there to fill that Cortana role and to, you know, be on your ears and talk to you once in a while for exposition because we all know Master Chief isn't doing any of that. And that's fine but it also just kind of felt cheesy and once again I feel that the drama around Cortana feels tired and I think this is a mutual feeling with other fans of the franchise. Going back to that cheesy feeling though, I have to explain that and what I mean is I think there's a bit too many scenes of Master Chief reacting to Cortana and you know it trying to be a somewhat sentimental thing which you know I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to humanize Master Chief, you know, I think that was some of the plot threads of some of the better games. But here it just feels so sappy in the way it does it, with these cutscenes that don't actually progress the story at all, even though they pretend it does. They're like, oh, her memories are still around and they're so strong we can see that, I don't know, it sounds like something out of the notebook, it's very cheesy and I... Can't say I particularly enjoyed it. And added to that is just how often it happens. It is kind of like the game is beating you over the head. Like, look, Master Chief is sad. He doesn't have his waifu anymore. And now this new waifu, he kind of doesn't want her either. So, you know, um, he's not moved on yet. Uh, great. We haven't seen this before. 
regardless, I think it's not the worst thing ever, but it did come off very kind of emotionally manipulative and kind of cheesy to me. And in a lot of ways kind of hiding the lack of depth in the main story because it is like a very simple story for Halo standards. Halo often has a somewhat disconnect between its story and its action where you know there's a big sci-fi war going on and then the gameplay is Master Chief goes there and fixes it. But even though that doesn't exist here it somehow feels even more disconnected because it feels like the game in its action is trying to have this whole Cortana thing. Meanwhile, there's like this whole brute thing going on in the background, which I guess we'll have to solve as well. Anyways, I think I'm rambling a bit here, but yeah, I think people will enjoy this. I just thought it was a bit cheesy. I thought there's not much to it. And you know, there are moments in there that that's why I think people will enjoy it because there are those moments that that you can say hit hard in some contextual way but it just didn't work for me I'm sorry and a lot of that is gonna bleed into the gameplay as well and I think we can start this by addressing that the game is somewhat divided into two main sections the main plot kind of linear story and the open world section which I think is kind of a bad thing that I can do such a clear distinction between both because it does end up feeling very separate. If you want to, you can just kind of fly by the story and beat this game in about 6 or 7 hours. Which is fine for a first person shooter, but you know, it's also not particularly anything amazing. And it's not like you're seeing crazy scenarios and bombastic set pieces like other Halo games. It actually feels a lot more quaint throughout those 7 hours with mostly underground facilities like you'd see in the first Halo game and some outside areas. And honestly it can get rather repetitive. Towards the end the game really locks you into a very linear path and Honestly, I got kind of bored of it as I will say that my preferred side of the game was the open world bit Even though these areas are quite well detailed. They are also fairly repetitive and even in all their detail I personally still think they kind of lack that charm of the original Halo trilogy with it often looking like there is too much detail in certain sections giving it more of a crazy grotesque look rather than some mythical and grandiose one that I think fits the Halo aesthetic more but you know that's also my personal opinion and it is the stylistic choices done by 343 since Halo 4 which I know some people do prefer regardless though none of that really really addresses my problem with it feeling rather simple and repetitious in its design you could argue it's to look like Halo 1, but even in that first Halo game, there was quite a big variety of places, even outside, with different weathers and even different biomes, which are completely missing here. Here, the most you'll get is a day and night cycle, which is okay, I guess. I truly believe the one thing that saves this campaign, at least these linear levels, is the grappling hook because it does add a completely new way of addressing some of these areas and how you address combat of course making you a lot more mobile which adds a completely new perspective to this level design that you might already be familiar with and in that way it does mitigate the repetition somewhat given that as you learn to adapt and play with these new abilities it does make the game play out somewhat differently but also if you really wanted to you could really just play this like another Halo game. While fun, these new additions are also for the most part not mandatory at all. And speaking of that, I do have to talk about the other abilities you have. There are 4 abilities in total, with the first one being of course the hook shot, which is the big addition to this game. My guess would be from the way it feels and plays that it's very inspired by Doom Eternal. Obviously I can't prove that, but I'll say from playing both games that they feel very similar and this type of trend in video games is not very uncommon to see. Like for example on the first half of 2010 
it seemed like every game had to have a bow and arrow. There were games where it was obvious, like Skyrim, Dark Souls, Dragon's Dogma, but then you would also notice them implementing it into games that previously didn't have anything like that, like Tomb Raider or Far Cry, and probably the most weird example, Crisis 3. Regardless, I'm getting off topic. All I'm saying is, I don't think anyone is copying anyone. I think people are clearly influenced by things. And of course, trends in video game development do also exist. Regardless, this is the best addition to the game by far. The other three are a radar kind of thing. You drop it, you shoot it, so to say, and then it will catch a radius of enemies and you'll be able to just see them through walls and things of that nature within that range of course not super useful in a game this open unless you're the type to kind of camp but you know if you're that type no one likes you mm. i'm sorry the other one is the dash a bit more useful especially against a certain enemy you have to shoot through the back because you can level it up so once you do the dash you become invisible for a set time and that's really the only way it's good because of course with the grapple hook which is a much more effective dodge in a lot of ways since it has a much bigger reach it does make the actual dash feel gimped especially since it does come on quite late in the game and you might already be a lot more proficient with the grapple hook the idea of course would be that the dash is a lot quicker but it's not like enemies are insanely quick either, so it's not a huge advantage. Maybe in higher difficulties? I'm not sure. And the last ability is a shield. Not quite like the usual Halo shield people know. This one appears in front of you, it's like a wall. And much like the dash, because of the grapple hook and this game's openness and focus on mobility i really didn't find myself using this one much which is kind of funny because you know you made this grapple hook which is like the main attraction of the game and then every other ability ends up feeling completely useless to anyone that would enjoy using the grapple hook you know i'm not saying too much time was put into the grapple hook and not enough time into the other things but uh, yeah i'm saying that I guess maybe these other abilities exist more if you don't like the grapple hook and you want to play it more like a classic Halo game. Maybe that's the case, but I don't know why you'd want that because it's not like 343 is known for their classic Halo gameplay. Regardless though, the last thing I want to say about these abilities is of course that you can level them up. I already mentioned that, but an interesting thing here though is that you level them up by collecting points that are hidden or not so hidden throughout the map. And the weird thing about them is that there's way more points to find than there are points that you can level up. So by the end of the game I had a very big surplus of points that I really didn't have anything to do with. My guess here might be that this is for co-op. So when you play in co-op, both people can get all of the abilities maxed out, but I'm not sure. Mostly because, well, there is no co-op yet and it's only being added a few months from now. I'm actually not sure and don't ask me. Regardless, it's not a big deal. It would be a big deal if there weren't enough points, but no, I mean, I guess there's nothing wrong with having too many of them. Now then, let's talk about this open world bit, which to me was the most enjoyable one if, once again, kind of useless and somewhat repetitive. The idea of this open world is that you're trying to save other soldiers, given the plot of the game has you kind of playing as the underdogs coming back from a really bad defeat. And the idea here being that you're establishing yourself back in the war zone. And that's fine, but it just doesn't have enough gameplay changes or world changing events happening once you do capture quite a lot of these places. The most you'll see is just finding more soldiers around from your own team, which is fine I guess, but they're not very helpful, they die pretty quick in battle and it's not like they kill a whole lot to be honest. It's kind of weird how AI in games is, like enemies do all these crazy cool maneuvers 
Meanwhile, meanwhile, friendlies barely know how to shoot a weapon. Which, I get why. They don't want them doing all the work. But, you know, they could be a little bit more effective. Regardless though, there are primarily three activities to do in the map. Yes, three. It's not a lot, but... Well, it, there's no but. There's just not a lot. The main one is capturing FOBs. These ones are your fast travel points. They also allow you to get weapons. Also, comrades to, you know, come with you if you get a vehicle. This is also where you get your vehicles. And they also reveal all the other activities in that area. And that's fine. Capturing them is usually fairly easy. You just have to kill whoever is standing around there. Kind of like, you know, Far Cry. I know a lot of people are going to compare this game in their reviews to Breath of the Wild. And I get why, because it's a big green open field that you can traverse in various ways, especially with a grapple hook. But it still follows much more in that kind of Far Cry 3 era type of exploration. With these areas where you have to kill a certain number of enemies and then it's yours. There's also some camps that, you know, they contextualize it through the plot like this is a weapon factory and then you have to go there and destroy it but this is also where one of my problems with the game comes in and is when you complete these enemies still spawn there and come after you which kind of diminishes the point of capturing these areas mind you they don't show up on fobs the fast travel points which thank god that'd be really annoying but they do show up in these other bigger factory areas which i guess would be so the world doesn't become barren but then at the same time then what the f hell am i doing this for the third then and probably the most engaging activity is capturing or not capturing just killing high value targets or wanted targets i guess would be you probably know what this is you know this has been in other games throughout the years, I'm not going to mention them. Ubisoft has made millions of them, you know. I'm not going to bother, you know what they are. Basically, in these missions, you'll go to a place and there will be a very powerful enemy there with also some regular enemies defending him. And early on, these are the most challenging battles because these guys have quite a lot of health and they also have a shield that regenerates. But... As you progress through the game and you unlock vehicles, especially vehicles, then these ones also become fairly easy. Hell, everything becomes very easy once you unlock the helicopter. Because then at that point you can just kinda hit everyone from far away and not really have to worry too much about it. Even the later and much harder targets are made quite easy with this technique. So it does make sense that it only shows up later on in the game and it shows up by points meaning you can't just wait until later on in the game to get it and then just completely wipe the map you do have to be doing things that will add points to unlock these vehicles but still you know once i got it everything else felt just like a cleanup job which you know isn't great but also in other ways i'm also glad that it did show up at that point because I don't like when games give me like the very powerful item after I've already done everything. So in that way I actually think it's done alright. That being said, to reiterate, these three main activities are very repetitious. There's very little change between them. You know, when you go into a base you'll probably have to enter somewhere and destroy something very specific. When you have to capture an FOB, you just have to kill whoever is there. Sure, the enemies may vary, but the activity is basically the same. I think something that would really help here is maybe some more varied activities. But outside of these, what you can do is also very plain, to say the least. It is mostly collecting items, maybe destroy something on the map, which is really just collecting item but you have to shoot at it first especially since most of the time these are either not guarded at all or barely guarded like whatever vehicle helped you get there you can probably just ran them over and collect whatever you have to collect or ignore them and then just go away it, you know they don't care 
There's another activity that's kind of like a fourth activity. This one is about rescuing soldiers that have been captured by the enemy, but these also all play out the same. They're always just in an open field and they're all always locked in the same way, which is very weird because actually early on in the game, during the more tutorial area, they show that you can save them from like different prisons but that only happens like a couple of times during the actual gameplay. Regardless, I think, you know, this particular mission could have used just a lot more variety with the way you had to rescue these prisoners or even where you have to take them or having to keep them alive because as it is here, the game really doesn't care. You just have to unlock them from their kind of energy shackles they have and then kill all the enemies around. The game really doesn't care if they all die in the process. It's honestly kind of funny in that way. But yeah, the game really could use more variety in this open world section. It feels, and I'm gonna say this even though the game was delayed a year, it feels kinda rushed. You know, things like races, different events, different weather effects maybe, that could have helped, you know, like the first Halo game had. Ah. You know, that came, that came out 20 years ago. Anyways, I still enjoyed it and I had my fun with it, especially in this open world mode. But it's in that same way that I enjoy Ubisoft and mobile games, in a way that it's like, it activates the pleasure neuron for like a little bit and you're like, mm, I want more, so let me do it again, kind of thing, rather than a fulfilling gameplay mechanic that I'm gonna be remembering for a while. So yeah, be aware of that. Regardless, final thing I want to talk about gameplay wise is the guns and this is probably the more open or more free Halo game guns wise. Usually Halo games give you the military, you know, from your side of the war weapons at the beginning and then of course as you lose the ammo you have to switch and start playing with the alien weapons. Here though there always seems to be quite a big supply of both. So, you know, if you're the type that doesn't quite like one or the other, you'll always be able to just play with whatever you want. Even though I always thought that Halo had a balance as some ammo is, of course, more effective against certain enemies, making you always want to at least have one of each or have just two of the regular weapons because usually alien weapons are easy to find. So carrying two of those regular weapons does make it easier for you to save ammo of that type. But it's not like, you know, this approach is bad. It is a bit more mindless, but it also fits this more open nature of the game because you will be, you know, moving around a lot, meaning you're not always gonna be in a position where a weapon from a dead soldier is just gonna be lying around like you'd usually find in a more corridor or linear path which this game also has mind you also the grapple hook does also help in this because it can just reach out for weapons and grab them which is a pretty cool thing to do in the middle of combat regardless though from a mechanic standpoint halo feels great you know it plays great the shooty man game or i guess shooty alien game feels good but its design does not feel particularly inspired or particularly engaging for too long. I do think in their attempts at being a lot like the first game, they also end up feeling somewhat uninspired and even not reaching the same heights that first game does. And that's why I'm not particularly loving this new Halo Infinite as much as everyone else seems to because of course graphics wise this is the newest biggest AAA game it looks great you know always pushing graphics forward in terms of music well it's halo music it sounds pretty good especially when they bring that classic up you know what i'm talking about i can't sing i can't do it especially not with this voice regardless though like i said from a technical standpoint this is a great game that's about it. It doesn't do anything special to stand out in my opinion outside of that grapple hook. And it's a great grapple hook, don't get me wrong, but the overall experience for me it's still gonna be just, you know, some fun game I played in 2021. It's not my favorite game of the year and 
it's not probably a game that's gonna come to mind much which is not a bad thing per se but in this series there are games that do do that and when you compare them to this one this one suddenly doesn't seem so good it is by far in my opinion the best 343 halo game but even if i had to compare it to any of the bungie halo games i don't know how it would stack up even if i compare it to odst or reach it doesn't look very impressive in my opinion especially since this game does actually try to do some odst things but i don't really want to spoil that but you know if i did spoil it I would spoil that it is kind of disappointing. Feels more like, hey, do you remember ODST? Then, hey, this is an important piece of the story. Regardless though, let me just kind of talk about the multiplayer real quick. It's fine. I'll be honest, I'm not a big multiplayer guy. It's been a really long time since I've invested any time into a multiplayer game. And I didn't really care to put any time into this one. I played a little bit before the game came out because, of course, it came out as kind of a beta thing but I'll be honest I haven't really had a desire to come back to it it looks good because again Halo looks good and it's a new AAA game people are saying that the progression is not so good I wouldn't know I haven't played it enough and I don't care this is a single player review I should have probably said that at the beginning I'll probably put some text regardless Halo Infinite as a game it's still good and You'll notice that as I give Halo Infinite a 7 out of 10. Recommendations wise though, if this is your first Halo game, then you might enjoy it. But honestly, value wise, if this is your first Halo game, it's not particularly great value when you can buy the Master Chief Collection, which gets you all the great Halo games. And for for less than this game costs right now. If you have played the Master Chief Collection then sure you will enjoy this as well but be aware that it's a 3 for 3 game and not a classic Halo game. Despite the vibe the game is going for which is clear that it is the first Halo game. All of that being said though given that both the Master Chief Collection and Halo Infinite are on the Game Pass I think you don't lose anything if you have that subscription from trying them both out. I would say if you are in that position, play the original games first. Because I'll be honest, I believe that games are better played in sequence. And you know, Halo is like the arbiter, I get it, of the modern first person shooter. So, you know, it has aged surprisingly well. So it isn't all that jarring in my opinion to go and play those earlier games. Regardless of whatever you do though, I hope that you enjoyed watching and if so please consider subscribing, liking and commenting all the things you can do for free here on YouTube. And regardless of that, I hope you're having a good day and goodbye. And never forget that this fight was supposed to be finished 14 years ago.